My name is Earl Miller. I'm the Pickauer Professor of Neuroscience at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. My name is Evan Angelados. I'm a research scientist with the Pickauer Institute for Learning and Memory at MIT. We're here to tell you about our study on the difference in neural activity between the prefrontal cortex and striatum during category learning. We studied the prefrontal cortex. The part of the cortex is at the front of the brain, and it's thought to be the brain's executive, making all the high-level important decisions for goal-directed behavior and learning new complex types of behaviors. We also studied the striatum, which is a structure deep in the basal ganglia that's more primitive but also important for new learning. Based on previous experiments and also other studies and other information, we thought we had a hypothesis that the striatum may learn simple things very quickly, send that information up to the prefrontal cortex, which puts things together into the bigger picture. In other words, the striatum learns the pieces of the puzzle, whereas the prefrontal cortex puts the puzzle together. We studied this um, process during category learning and found just that. Let me start out with a simple example to illustrate abstract categorization. As you hear me speak, probably one thing that strikes you is my foreign accent. If you had to classify it, would you say it's British or Greek? Now, I doubt that anyone would seriously say it's British. Most people would say it's Greek, no question about it, and it would be correct. But if I were to ask you, how did you do it, you would not be able to say. That is because it's an instance of abstract categorization, which you can do well without knowing how you did it. You do not realize which features of my speech you process in order to make your decision. And that is exactly what we did in the laboratory with animal models, but using visual stimuli instead of auditory. Stimuli were designed according to the prototype distortion paradigm. For each category, we first constructed a prototype image of seven white dots at random locations. Then, by distorting the prototype, we constructed a large set of category exemplars that were all unique. On each trial, the subjects were tested on a single, randomly chosen exemplar, which they had to classify by choosing between a saccade to the left or to the right target. One critical feature in our project was the block design, which was structured to make the environment that the subjects were exposed to gradually more challenging. They were first trained on the minimum number of exemplars per category, and once learned, the exemplars were doubled. While they were learning these new categories every day, we used a multi-electrode technology to record neural activity simultaneously from the lateral prefrontal cortex and striatum. What we found was that early on in the experiment, in the first couple of blocks, when the exemplars were few and repeated often enough so they could be memorized, there was strong engagement of the striatum. In contrast, in the later blocks, when the number of exemplars increased to a point that it became overwhelming, and they could not be memorized anymore, information in striatum subsided, and there was strong engagement of the prefrontal cortex, where actually the abstraction of these new categories first became evident. So to use a simple metaphor, you could say that striatum saw the trees, when prefrontal cortex actually saw the forest. Now this is important, because in some cases of autism, as well as schizophrenia, there have been reports that individuals seem to be consumed by the details. They seem to be losing the forest for the trees, which may indicate that there may be either a malfunction in prefrontal cortex processing or in the communications between prefrontal cortex and striatum. Please see our neuron paper for more information. Thank you.